it did do really well in that um that game. I do remember quite frankly, it, it was really nice. Like he got a he got a nice start. Uh, really just went around killing everyone across the map, which is, I'm sure he enjoyed it quite a bit. It's one of those things with like mid-Ricky, right? Like once you get to that stage where you have the Diffusal Blade, it just feels like you can kill anyone. And I think it is especially nice against the Puck, because the smoke screen is going to make it very hard for, for the Puck to really get anything done if it does get caught out. Now, still GXR, probably something they haven't, you know, not seen before. It's, it is Ricky CK, you know, you, they, they'll probably know how to deal with it. We'll see what they do draft here in this fourth pickup, though. They do have plenty of reserve time to, to make this decision. Curious to see what route they do go down and where they're putting the CK uh, on the side of SMG, though. Like, are we just looking at a carry CK and they just look to just snowball and take over the map? It's probably going to be the case. I suppose mm. you still do have the option of, like, that offlane DK, but... Uh, excuse me, offlane CK, but... That hasn't felt popular in quite a while. Yeah, it hasn't really shown up in a long time. We used to see the Ags rush from the offlane. That used to be fun for a lot of PCs. Yeah. Not sure if we're going to see that again. Uh, GXR, they do go into wow. the Lesh. So this is an interesting flex around. Could be our offlane Mizu Lesh rack, but Alakrity taking that mid puck um, gives them good push still to play with. As you've got Lesh Rack's Edict, Luna can right click down the towers quite nicely. And you can run from there. So they can still play at fast pace here from GXR's end with a Lesh Rack on hand. They could flex the Lesh Rack mid or off along with a puck. So they can kind of leave their options open. Mm, I think Lesh Rack offlane sounds better here. Puck mid to hold against a Ricky should still manage well enough. Uh, all things considered, you, sh you still have your mobility for the runes in play. And you can still kind of play around with your right click harassment onto the Ricky. SMG... Got to see how they close out this draft. It does feel like they've hammered in the Brewmaster as a support now. So we'll see if they stick true with that. Maybe they last pick a different five. Run the Brewmaster off. CK safe. Ricky mid. Could be an option as well. Brewmaster line doesn't sound like a bad lane. It can kind of harass out Luna if you want to play that way. So can still kind of shift around. SMG, I like the ban though. They take out Underlord. The route would have been really annoying for the Ricky. And the percent based damage on Firestorm would have melted the Brewmaster and CK throughout the entire game. So they just take away an offlaner that would have been really annoying to deal with uh, throughout the entire game and just kind of secure themselves a good ramp up on whatever they decide to hammer in on safe. Yeah, absolutely. One ban out left, SMG. They've been focusing on the offlane, it seems like, of, of GXR here. Seems like they might just go for the mid lesh and uh, maybe a support puck, I think, on the side of GXR. At least that's what SMG might be thinking here with that Underlord ban. Wouldn't quite blame them either, because it is hard to play puck into Ricky. I think you could still get the value of the puck in this game without having it be that, that mid laner. I think GXR will be more than happy to run it, but no, now SMG go back for a Shadow Demon ban out. So they're not 100% they're sure what's going on here. And it looks like they are going to pick up a Dark Willow. So it isn't going to be a support puck. The question is, what lane is it going to for GXR? We're going to have to wait till this uh, this final pickup now from SMG to, to figure that out. SMG, though, their own final pick. Their draft still very flexible in its own right. Do they want an off lane? Do they want to support themselves? Do... It's just all over the place here. Uh, I suppose this last like... pick is going to reveal it. It looks like GXR might be expecting a safe lane. I think they might assume offlane CK here for KP, which I'm trying to recall if we've seen him play it. He must have played it, but it feels like it's been a while from the games we've casted at least. Yeah, so could be an option. KP, CK with something else on safe as they did ban Dusa, they ban the NP. So maybe looking for a win condition at SMG. I feel like if you do want to play fast, CK safe is probably still perfectly fine here to play oh, that quick pace. Wow. Go with the Arc Warden. Jeez. Jeez. I mean, you All talked right. about fast, John. They went the exact opposite way. They, they want to drag out the game, apparently. So Arc Warden's here for mid one. Moon oh, is God. on the mid, Ricky, and they do go for the offlane CK. So, I mean, in some way, I'm very curious to see what they do with this draft now, right? Like, is this going to be that CK with the Aghanim Scepter? You get an illusion of the Arc Warden to make matters even worse for the side of <laughs> for the side of GXR. Is the draft too greedy as well? Like, it does feel like a a weirdly greedy draft of that offlane CK. Very curious to see how Team SMG tries to make this draft work. 
Uh, GXR, much more self-explanatory. They are going for the off-lane puck. Uh, the mid left rack is going to be the deal here from GXR. And of course, In Your Dream on the carry Luna. John, I'll ask you the hard question. And this is really a hard question this time around. Who did come out with the better draft? It's tricky. SMG's big win condition in the Arc Warden can infinitely stall out. You do not have the Terrorblade as your big win condition here for GXR, which tends to be like the be-all and all core in that matchup. I think the Luna has a fair shake of it, though. Uh, the key thing is GXR has a very fast pushing pace. So as long as Alacrity starts making those rotations to melt those tier 1 towers quick, you're going to run out of map space to get an Orc Warden, a Ricky, and even a CK up, on, up and online, depending on how KP builds. We've seen CKs rush towards a Midas. That's going to slow down the pace here for uh, the side of SMG if they go that greedier route. I think you have to be more active on the Ricky, on the CK to buy the Arc Warden space. You can't afford to play it ultra slow in the early game. You do need some good farm to come out, and the best way to secure that is probably by fights. Because yeah. GXR is going to look to fight early on with Lesh, with the Dark Willow, with her combination of that, with a Puck. There's, there's a lot of control early on for GXR, and they're not relying on very long cooldowns. So SMG has to watch for that and keep up the pace to get that space for mid one. No, certainly so. Kind of intriguing as well. I brought up the loop battles just then, John, and they are pretty much exactly even. So very even kind of matchup expected from the uh, from the betting scene, apparently. Interesting stuff. I'm still very unsure how to feel about these drafts, at least from SMG. Yeah, it's I, I want to see it work. It just feels so it's it feels so left field that I I don't know how they're gonna make it work. But I'm looking very forward to seeing what the game plan is. Yeah, I think, again, I just worry about the greed of this lineup. Like, Ricky, if it doesn't get that fast defusal, heck, if it doesn't get the fast orb of corrosion phase boots, it doesn't feel like it's going to do a lot of damage. Um, I, I think your, your control here is pretty good from SMG in that you've got Earth Spike, you've got the Silence from the Ricky down the line, you've got the RNG Chaos Vault to play with as well. And especially that smoke screen is going to put a dent on GXR if they clump up too hard. So I think for GXR's end, you might want to see some fast support for staffs. Just to be able to bail out one of your big cores. Like say, Alacrity in particular will have to watch out for the smoke screens once the Ricky has that up. But beyond that, again, GXR. I mean, they have that Dream Coil and the Terrorize combination. You just break coil naturally give you a lot of control in team fights and smg has no saving spells so gxr can just keep running and gunning if they catch the right hero and just keep them down recovery farm is going to be a bit tricky to spread around that it will bit of a war check here from moon i'm not going to find anything i to think it's on the left side but no wards have actually been placed here from gxr they're just going to hold out with their own Observer in that mid lane. No mid ward either for uh, for SMG, actually. Both wards placed in the side lanes from uh, from the side of SMG. So they've opted to not give Moon a ward. I, I suppose the Ricky, he doesn't really need it. Impaled out. They've got the stun on Roggi. A lot of damage as well. The bounty room going their way. And Roggi looks like he is set to fall on Mizu. He will go ahead and take it on the puck. The offlane puck off to a great start in terms of that bonus gold. Aren't you going to be the first blood already? Yeah, it's uh, unfortunate for SMG. They did get a really good earth spike to counteract, but there's just more control, more early burst here from GXR. If they wanted to really fight, I think KP had to show up and he was just securing that bot room. So they missed out on the opportunity to trade. Do see the lane split up. Mizu is up top on that offlane puck, as mentioned. He is with Jokam on the pause for Dark Willow. See Raji just running up, getting good right-click damage off. Doesn't feel great for Mizu. And then Raji's just fairly tanky enough to get that done. Giving mid one the space he needs on the Arc Warden. So the initial wave's looking good here, but you already have Jokam going for the pull. So he's going to be able to equalize the lane. Lose a courier. Raji just doing great work to equalize the lane as well by getting that pull and should meet in the jungle. So it's the awkward jungle farm here. Yeah, I mean, why the hell not? Both... Both sides, they did end up kind of blocking those camps as well, so it's very important as now Roggi's going to be chased down, but he's going to avoid all the brambles. The mid one is even there with the Spark Wraith just in case, just to get a bit more bonus damage onto Mizu. 
And of course, now you're fighting high ground as GXR, so it's rather tough to try and secure your own lane. Uh, mid one, he's going to go ahead and, and pretty much just deny off all those creeps away from the side of GXR. But we'll have a look at the other lanes as well. Mid lane, Alacrity is there against Moon. Uh, Moon having a pretty darn nice time so far on the Ricky. Alacrity, not too far behind, but can be a little bit challenging fighting into the Ricky in that 1v1 matchup. Seems like he will be able to catch up underneath his tier 1 tower anyway. It's Mizu. It's not... So he, dropped, he dropped quite low, but he's going to be fine. Yeah, it's not too bad of a lane mid. You can hold it as the Lush. You've got pretty good ways to harass out the Ricky if you see him commit the Blink Strike forward. Would he split Earth so you can kind of get your harassment off there? You can see Alak, he's already built up on the Edict. So he's got even more melee matchups for Lush Rack. Just tend to work out well if the enemy side plays too far forward. So Moon has to be a bit more conservative. Just focus on the last hits. Doing a great job so far. We'll have to see how well it builds up. Level 5 is going to be scary. Once Alacrity has that up, that's when the damage output really kicks into overdrive and potential push onto mid can line up. That's something SMG has to watch out for. So the last lane down bot. See in your dream laning with his support, Paulson, on that pause 5 next. They are up against Afu and KP on the CK line lane. So there's a lot of stuns here, and they can play aggressive by the top. Yeah, Roji ends up dying there to Mizu. They're still going to try and get aggressive down this bot lane, but it is CK Lion. There's only so much you can do right now at these levels, as now they will trade farm, or rather harass back the way of KP. Let's have plenty of stick charges plus the Bracer, though, so he's going to be just fine. Looks like uh, KP and Afu, they do want to try and get aggressive with this double stun lineup in this off lane, but again, I don't think it's going to be quite that easy. Especially when In Your Dream's already this healthy. They have burnt through a lot of uh, a lot of the region though, which I suppose is one way to get it started. Yeah, I think you're still having a great time for KP though. He's leading in the CS. Uh, you're not really able to do much with Nyx Luna. If you can chain stun, but KP's just too tanky to hit. And Afu keeps good spacing out, so he's not really going to lose out on the harassment. And... In that sense, you're happy enough. Equilibrium is a good state to be in. You're getting a better time for mid one up top. So he's going to build up onto that Midas a lot quicker than In Your Dream's going to hit, say, a Mask of Madness. And you can just get your arc warden rolling faster than Luna. That's all you really care for for the state of game right now in SMG's end. Just securing that start for your arc warden to really not get punished. And, and at the least, you're getting that done, despite these two kills on GXR side. You know what scares me about Ark Warden, John, is I feel like this is going to be a strong, powerful hero at uh, a TI-10. Uh, I've got this weird <laughs> feeling, like we've been seeing it more and more, and it just feels like Ark Warden is going to be a, one of the main culprits in terms of Pos ones at TI-10. Especially with all these TBs and these Lunas coming out, Ark Warden just does such a great job against both of them. It's uh, going to be a very interesting time if this new patch never comes out prior to the, uh, <laughs> the event happening, let me tell you. Oh yeah. Gosh, I hope we get something to shake that up because, you know, Terrorblade versus Arc Warden just becomes a battle of who gets the Ballista. As you yep. see a bit of chase and Jokam drops low, but down bot. Yeah, He's copying a lot of harassment here. A lot of cells being popped. In fact, two from the side of SMG. There's a little regen being committed as they try to go for the large camp pool. And Arfu is going to be able to get two creeps. And now KP is going to go after In Your Dream. Double stuns are out in your dream. He has some really fast movement speed, but he was kind of body blocked there by Polison for a second. He does have the Morbid Mask up, but there's no other regen available. So now in your dream, going to have to play very carefully. There's one stun out from KP into an Earth Spike, and that's basically a guaranteed kill on this Luna. Yeah, he's playing on the edge, and it's, again, very tough for the Luna so far. The chain stuns, the tankiness of KP leading to no real harassment opportunities. Just makes it hard, and they even get the pulse off in KP. Yeah, he's going in by himself right now. He might actually be able to get the job done, but he does back off before he incurs too much damage. As Afu, he's coming back into the lane. I think Afu wanted to go ahead and secure those six minute power runes, but he's not really gonna be able to do that now. So he may still make it in time, but Alacrity, he's already there to try and secure, and he will get unlucky. Moon, he gets lucky at top lane. Does take the illusion rune away from the lash. That is going to mean that you are left with an empty bottle on alacrity. However, bot lane, KP. And a drain is there in your dream. One more lucent beam will do it. Does he have the range? Yeah, he does. 
It's a very nice valuable kind of pick off there for, for in your dream and even a TP cancellation coming into that bot lane. Not going to feel very good for the side of SMG. No. Missed opportunity. Have to be careful about how long you leave that CK alone. As he can still get run down. Okay, you do have a nice amount of magic damage coming through from GXR. And that helped stabilize the lane for your new dream. Still lagging behind compared to mid one. But with the Morbid Mask up into that Mask of Madness, which is already finished as well. He can focus on the jungle now. There are some stacks being slowly built up, but Alacrity has cleared out the triangle, so he's just going to have to take what he can get on the bot jungle farm. There is a nice ward drop, but it's only watching the ramps. So there's no information from SMG to find that out yet. And In Your Dream should be able to play catch up in the jungle. It's one of the boons of Luna. Just flash farms really quick when it's given the opportunity with a more, uh, Mask of Madness. Yeah, but for now, mid one's doing an even greater job in terms of farming. Top of the net worth board, 3.5k. Never a good sign if you're the other team, that's for sure. It's bot lane, it looks like they are going to try and make a chase onto Afu and KB, but both of them will get out. Alacrity, the only thing he's going to get out of this is that large cap, and he doesn't even want that. He'll leave the Wildwing Ripper alone for Polison to deal with as he does try to make his way to the other side of the jungle, where there's actually some stacks to take. Yeah, he's... Definitely playing a bit greedier, taking these stacks away from In Your Dream down the line. Up top, Raji. It's going to be fine, it looks like. Mizu's now the one in danger as he tries to orb away, but what on earth spike Ah Fu? Yeah, lines it up as the orb is flying in. Mizu, he's still just going to try and waiting rift past the tree line, but Moon does have the quelling. The tricks of the trade will be enough. They get a very nice kill now onto the puck. Sure. Really deep dive coming out there from Mizu. Left alone as the supports were again playing elsewhere. There is a smoke play coming out from GXR though. Lakati gonna look to line up his shots. Moon would be a very good target to take. And they might just find him. They need a stun though. Dust is out. Alacrity, he's gonna land the splitter. I didn't think he'd get away with that. Bramble's there as well. Now the oh. impale Polison. He lines up an even better impale than, than Afu did just then. Reduce to your elements. And Alacrity cleans them both up. Bot lane, they're going to try and pressure KP. He was trying to go for a bit of a chase. And it looks like it's going to backfire him. And now as Mizun in your dream are going to chase him down. Lose some beams there. They have the brambles out and they'll get rid of the Chaos Knight. He'll stick charge, but it's not going to matter. Mizu is still going to be able to take the kill. Yeah, they could find more. They are just lining up the aggression now in GXR. I think the big thing is that they haven't been able to transition this to a push, but they've already taken the mid tier one. So they've already taken out a good starting point to invade that jungle early on. Maybe it's time to get some deeper wards in, as mid one has been allowed to take control of that top jungle by himself for a fair bit. Has the Midas up, as you'd expect, on the Arc Warden. The Maelstrom's not too far off as well. So he's going to be able to really control these side lanes out with a shove very soon. And that's when the Arc Warden starts to really ramp up and farm. Dyer's top is under Dyer's so top T1 top does drop now. Alacrity is going to be able to clean that up. They even got the mid tier one tower. So Radiant things could look tower. very, very tough now for mid one in this jungle. I have to start being very careful and wary about GXR and, and where they're located. And bottom lane, SMG. They're going to shop to try and force this bottom T tier one tower in. Very important not to lose map control when you've got an Arc Warden on your side. You do want all the map space you can get to, to really be able to get that initial farm up on this Arc Warden. And even with the Midas up, he wants a bit to travel there. He wants the Maelstrom before he can really get active. And now Moon is going to get caught. He breaks the coil. Brambles are there with the Fear out. They should be able to burst him down in time. They'll get him. A nice impel there from Polison to boot. And Roggi, he'll be chased down. He might just make it out as the orb will not connect. Now, can they turn? Stun out is going to connect onto Ooh. the puck with the Earth Spike and the follow up. They will get him. Alacrity, though, has rotated now and is going to chase down KP. The CK in danger is the stun. It is going to land on two. Oh they God. got mid one as well on Arthur. He is going to drop to boot. Alacrity does finally drop, but what does it matter? You've basically wiped them already. He helped kid off three targets. Is now Roddy's going to be in danger. Moon does come back in. The Bedlam, it's not going to be enough for Moon. He does get a return onto Joe Cam as he'll chase down Polison. And Polison does turn around for an impale. A little bit of a mana burn. Moon, he'll keep up the chase. 
but he won't have enough damage to get through to the next assassin and that definitely was a favorable trade in the end towards the side of gxr in fact it's not even over they got another dream call up Moon, he's stuck around. He just respawned, but it looks like he is going right back to the grave. As Mizu, has he gone too far? Hex stun is there. Alacrity, though, is going to be out to back him up. They will not lose their puck. I'm, I'm, I'm surprised SMG dragged mid one into that fight. Like, he, maybe he felt strong with a Maelstrom up. He's still very vulnerable without any other items up. And the commitment coming through from GXR is too much. In fact, Still going, you're invading that jungle now. That they are. Awesome, gonna be careful. Alacrity, Split Earth, not gonna be on the mark, so instead they'll go for the Terrorize, but they are gonna lose Polison. That KB now, looking for a chase onto the Leshrac, does get the stun out, but they're gonna have to try and settle for this Dark Willow instead. And Joe Cam, he's gonna get fingered down. Mid one, the one to take the kill on the Arc Warden. And so it's been a very back and forth kind of game so far. 11 to 6. Both teams kind of having different moments where they where they end up overextending and giving kills away to the enemy team. And now it's just going to be a 1k net worth the way of GXR. So it is closing back in. As it looks like they're going to try and keep the fight up onto KB. Reality Rift is there. However, the Split Earth is going to be there to follow up from Alacrity. And now KB is going to drop on the CK and Afu. He's going to try and TP. And they do have the coil. They will lock him down through the TP. And that's going to be another double kill the way of GXR. Oh god, they've they've just constantly fought that every single time Dream Coil just goes off cooldown, they immediately get to use it. Like non-stop action in bot lane, they've really protected this tier one, and SMG still hasn't found a tower trade because of it. Now they have started to split off mid one. He's just farming in the triangle, farming in the jungle now, which is what you want to see from the Arc Warden. You are lacking some stable space to build up on your Ricky and on your CK, especially KP. He is rushing the act. So he's going for a more active build. No Midas wants to be ready to go when his team's going to fight. It's just such a slow build up for a CK. Like you rely on kills. They will smoke up. They will hunt on the bot lane once more. Maybe just secure that bot tier one. Looks like this time around GXR is not in position to defend. So they should be able to find the objective, but they've stalled out so much time Radiant's to just build up on in your dream. Attack. He's still behind mid one's farm, but not by much, like 500 gold. And that's a really good spot for the Luna to be in, considering that you're playing against double Midas on Arc Warden. Yeah, that's very true. Die. Just gonna buy the yeah. buy the time, and the Luna's timing's a bit faster than the Arc Warden as well. Like you, the Arc Warden, it's gonna take Radiant's a bit of time to tower. really feel Radiant's like it can start being an, a big, big nuisance. Or say with the Luna. You don't need quite as much to, to get involved with your team. As GXR, they're going to have Polis in that mid lane, just roaming around trying to maybe find themselves a target. Mid one. He's around, but they won't go after him. It's like they're just happy invading this dire jungle now. And SMG, they're going to do the exact same thing anyway. Just reinvade that radiant jungle. Pretty standard kind of map movement from both teams. Is now Polison. He is finally going to scout out mid one. So you do know where he's located, but I suppose you could have guessed that anyway. And now the pings yeah. come out. They notice Polison. A tithe to the impurities. Yeah, it's the level one vendetta. Duration's not long enough to really go back to back in the scouting. The control from GXR is still pretty good. SMG though are in a comfy spot now to build up. And the key thing is. Farm efficiency on the other course. It's only really mid one who's going at a blazing speed. Moon is lagging behind even Mizu's puck. And KP's behind him. So your other two cores are being sacked for this Arc Warden to be big. The investment in mid one has to pay off. Now he does have travel up. He can split push lanes by himself. The Mjolnir is going to come up next. And that's when the split push can really just be obnoxious to play against. I think for GXR, if they want to kind of keep their lead up they need to start thinking about tier twos or punishing that plump up bot like cutting off where key piece playing killing off one of these cores that are starved out kp gets a, a nice courier kill down that bot lane meanwhile smg they're gonna start rotating as two supports seeing if they can maybe find something 
Like an easy finger kill here. And Joe Cam is going to spot out our food, but it looks like In Your Dream's going to leave him beam, or maybe not. He'll turn around for a quick loose and beam out. They're going to lose our food, but maybe they get Joe Cam. Terrorize is going to be committed, and Joe Cam, he's going to go for a TP, but the Earth Spirit is not going to be affected. Of course, he does have spell immunity on that uh, on the Earth Panda. So no Terrorize is going to be affected, and he does get stunned through the TP. Yeah, it's a uh, decent enough trade of kill, support for support. I'd say you blew a bigger spell in the Primal Split there from SMG, so it's a bigger investment from them. Not going to have that for the next fight, which is unfortunate because they just finish up the Diffusal Blade on Moon. This is the Ricky's power spike. He's got the Orb of Corrosion, Diffusal Blade slow on top of it. They can really melt through some of these heroes if they're not careful. And they might look to leverage that for, for now. More than satisfied just keeping the farm game up. There is no real net worth lead coming out here for GXR just yet. 1k lead up, mainly down to the fact that Moon and KP are lagging behind more so than anything else. Although, bottom lane, KP has been caught out again. Quite deep in that off lane and Polison, he does have Spike Carapace. Problem is, KP's got nothing to throw out to activate it, so Paulson will just keep up. Vendetta Strike will be enough damage. They will get the kill, but top lane. Joe Cam's gonna drop on the Dark Willows. They do at least get a support for KP's life. Definitely not the greatest trade in the world for, for SMG, but it's all about buying enough time for mid one on that Arc Warden. In fact, now in your dream, He's been caught out. Moon's there. However, Eclipse oh. is out. He's going to try and fight back, but he is all alone. They are going to throw everything out, and they will get him. Dream Coil, though. Moon is going to die to the Orb of Mizu. Still a great trade out from SMG. They'll be happy with that. Immediately back off, and it's going to buy even more time for mid one. Yeah, it's very worthwhile trade. I'm surprised in your dream stay there, knowing that his support just died to the Diffusal Ricky. Maybe feeling a bit too confident. No backup from GXR cost him. And that top tier one is still set to fall. Mid one, pull me all near up. Damage output of the R4 now is very, very nice. And he can just split push as much as he wants when that Tempest double every time it's up. GXR needs to be ready. They do have travels up on Alacrity to at least keep pace with that Tempest double illusion. So they can kind of burst it down in side lanes. Yeah, prevent too much split push from going on. We do need to see more action taken by GXR. I think they have to be the ones taking the initiative here. When you're playing this kind of slow game, like it does still look like Moon and KP are lagging behind, but eventually the Ags will be up on that CK. Oh, Joe Cam ends up dropping again. Alacrity, he's trying to take care of this Tempest double. And I believe that actually expired in time anyway. So I, I don't think he got the gold for that. Fortunate there for Alacrity. Very close this game though. Still less than 1k net worth lead for GXR. Mid one, he's still top of the net worth board. Still doing Arc Warden things. Queuing up that Eye of Scardi next on this Arc Warden. He's trying to get even more annoying on this hero as top lane, Rodgy. He's just going to TP out of the tree line. Not going to be spotted whatsoever. And you start to wonder how GXR are going to deal with this, this mid to late game now with SMG. Like, you are approaching the later stage of the game. Radiance middle tower you wonder, do, do they realize this Arc Warden? Do they have a way of dealing with it? I'd say they do have a couple of ways with their spell damage. Although, mid one. Oh, mid one. Impel, Paulson, he Ooh. actually connected on both of them. He lined it up perfectly. And Arthur's already gone. Mid one. Ouch. Loses his real life. Not just the Tempest double. Moon is going to try and follow up and trade some kills here. His Polison might just drop. No, the neutral cap. It took the tricks of the trade attacks, but it won't matter. Or maybe it will as Moon now. He gets caught out. He's been leashed. Can they take him out? Yeah, they certainly can as Joe Cam. He even found KP. They aren't going to be able to follow up and kill the CK. But they got three great targets. Two of those being Moon and Mid One. That is not going to feel great for SMG. No, man. It's going to put them a step back, losing the Arc Warden that way. And I think they need to hold out a little bit longer. KP's Ags is almost up. So you're going to have the PC crashing Phantasm Illusions coming in soon, Mike. Always a treat. Haven't seen that in a while. Let's see if the game is any more optimized right now. If, if our rigs can hold up. But it's almost there. I think that's the big thing. SMG stalled out long enough that the trickle of farm coming in on their cores is 
almost ready. Like the defusal onto Ricky's big, the BKB slowly being built up, the ags for KP once that's done, it's just going to be a bit of a pain to deal with for GXR. And GXR, they're going to take this. Uh, SMG is going to have to smoke up now. They've got split back up. They can look to make a play with Moon. If they can. Mid lane. Spy Carapace is there. Lacrity, he's been baiting it, baited in. Eclipse is out, however, Arfu. He's already gone. They're going to try and jump into onto KP, but KP's got a Polison down. He's in your dream with the BKB, and now the Dream Coil. They've got the Arc Water mid one. He's still trying, but he is going to drop his KP now. He cannot sustain his oh. HP. A triple kill out for in your dream. And it looked bad at the side oh. effect. It might still be bad as Arfu. He does at least get a Lacrity, but it is going to cost him his own life. Moon gets a sleeping dart out now on Mizu. He's going to try and follow up, but the Yule Scepter's there from Joe Cam. That'll make it so Moon cannot commit for the kill. But boy, oh boy, it, it looked like such a bad start. So it, it kind of felt like GXR, they got baited into that mid-team fight. But it still ends up working out for them. They even got a dieback onto Arfu on that Lion. Yeah, it's a massive win. And SMG... Maybe getting a bit impatient. Like if I, I don't know how big a difference the Phantasm Ags would have done, but it is up now. And KP could have had that too if they chose to force the fight just literally 10, 20 seconds later. And still, GXR are not going to ask those questions. They've got the 5k lead up. They are building up an in your dream. He's still keeping up pace with mid one, just about 800 gold behind, which again, against an Arc Warden is not a bad number at all. And the they're just going to be able to do more. Like, they, they take the Tempest double as well, which slowly trickles gold your way. SMG, they have to be cautious. There was one thing that um, GXR is using really well. Paulison is just walking up to those, uh, to those spark rates and popping his spike carapace to isolate mid one. And that just causes SMG to immediately panic on their initiation. Like, they, they had to respond quick. It looked good, but it didn't line up in the heroes they wanted to pin down. Moon. The Paltons allowed to do that. Impel's there. They've got the Ricky. Alacrity is going to make it just in time for the Yule Scepter. And now the stun, but he's going to help around in Moon. He might be able to turn around and fight, but no, the Dream Coil. He's going to lock them down, but it won't matter. They'll have the damage. There goes your, your Leshrac as now Moon tricks the trade out. He's going to try and run, but in your dream, does secure the killers. Now Arfu has been spotted. Primal Split is out, but in your dream, he's already on a double kill. Moon did buy back. They're going to try and reinitiate now as Joe Cam. He'll get caught out. But he does get the Yule Scepter in time. They'll get the stun. So in the end, SMG, they still come out on top as Roggi. He's going to find the big one. He found in your dream, but the buyback is there now. Sleeping Dart onto Mizu, but there's the Eclipse in your dream. Going to try and fight back. Oh. A big stun there for the impel from the Nyx Assassin, but mid one. He's in the bubble. They can't hit their attacks on him. In your dream, he's in trouble now. As there's the Aghanim Scepter out from KP. In your dream, he can't survive. He's going to die mid one. He'll get a triple kill on the Arc Warden. And Paulison, he's still trying to be sneaky, but he has also been caught. A full team wipe now from SMG. And that's a big one. The buybacks, they end up paying off. Yeah, the GXR just not quite cutting the initiation. SMG dancing around them quite nicely, managing to bail out. There was a four staff save onto Moon. That really turned it. Like just enabling Moon to survive in the first engagement bought enough time for the rest of SMG to get the damage off, to get the control off. And I think GXR is going to have to be cautious about bleeding out like that. Their lead is down to 1k. They finish up the BKB on Alacrity, which is great. Now they have to be a bit cautious. They're down on numbers. SMG is going to line up for some objectives, maybe eyeing that mid-tier one, which is still standing at 25 minutes in, and uh, just building up that lead. Their Arc Warden's now 3k above the Luna. That's one major item that mid one will have that In Your Dream doesn't have a response for. And for the Luna, it's, it's a massive issue. All these evasion sources coming through with a smoke screen with a bubble she needs an mkb and roshan it's not going to take too long here from smg oh it certainly isn't they're trying to make their way over to fight this one out orb is going to be there but no they don't orb in moon he took the aegis himself on the ricky and now maybe try to go for a fight let it be i never realized by the way mid one found a grove bow on the arc ward Always one of those very nice items for the Arc Warden to have. In case he didn't yeah. have enough attack range yet. 
I wonder if he's going to get the ballista if this game goes late, right? Oh, let's hope like, it doesn't go that late, John. <laughs> you never know with an R Warden. Still, GXR back foot now. Less than 1k lead mid defense. Yeah, Arfu out with the finger. Moon is there. Tricks the trade onto In Your Dream. Four stuff. No, it's not out. Dream Coil is going to lock three of them down, though. It's going to be a nice time to turn around and get that Aegis out from Moon as KP. He broke the leash. He's going to end up going down. And now maybe they can find the Ricky a second time as Moon. He'll try to blink strike away and does barely make it out. But they've lost the Aegis already. As Paulison. Impel only on the creep wave. Yeah. Mm, I think that's enough. You take the Aegis away. You feel a little bit less safe on SMG. You are still buying space out for mid one. Has the Hyperstone in. And see what else he builds up to here. Yeah, it does have the full moon shard. So right click damage through the roof on the Arc Warden. And now it gets weird for Alacrity to fight that Tempest double. It's not a fight he really wins out with the right click damage. You have to be super careful. They are struggling a bit in the jungle. Uh, Raji just trading hits, but no course to back up GXR here. A bit risky. And then it moves on the cliff. Bramble's not going to be there in time. SMG still looking to get aggressive. They'll get a hex there. Onto Joe Camp. Four staffs away. SMG, even while losing that Aegis, they still want to try and get aggressive now. A mid one with that Moonshine is starting to hit very, very fast. And you see this illusion kind of meta that SMG is running right now. It's just if Arc Warden <laughs> wasn't enough, he has a billion illusions to deal with. Oh my god. It's just obnoxious coming out from SMG. And they just kind of control the map really well here. Right? Like they've, they've got a lot of spa safe space in their jungle. The bot jungle is the least safe. The GXR aren't really able to find any engagements right now. There's a ton of sentries from SMG watching these entrances as well. So they've always got information as to where Paulson's trying to run around. And they've got good forward vision here on SMG's end to enable them to take these more aggressive Radiant's farming spots. And they're just slowly chipping away. Like they're the ones able to get some work done onto the tier 2 towers with mid ones double. The top is already down to about half HP. GXR have kind of stalled out in the objectives, which is worrying. That's where their lineup is strong with Alesh Luna. They haven't been able to make progress on the tier 2s. Well, how do you do it, though? Like, you're against Dark Order. We go over this every single time. We cast this hero, John. It just feels impossible to do anything. Like, you get to this stage where the Arc Warden can just constantly keep everything pushed in. And to make matters worse, SMG, they have the, the CK Agonims. So it's even worse than usual. Like, it just feels like you'll never be able to leave your base at this point or never leave your own half of the map. Sleeping Dart. But Moon's been caught. Terrorizer's there. They're going to blow him up. Bit too excited there from our Ricky is now our foot. Split Earth, or rather, stun is not gonna land. Mizu's in. Dream Coil is already expended though. His Aeon Disc is gonna proc. There's Alacrity. That is a lot of damage out from this Arc Warden. Alacrity's forced to BKB up and just run. He might need to try and turn now. Mid one. He's forced to BKB on his own. In your dreams, gonna try and go for a bit of a chase, but KP, he's waiting for that BKB to end. Eclipse is there. Is it gonna matter? They've got our food. They've got Roger. Oh Mid one. God. He gets left behind. An ultra kill out from In Your Dream. He times the Eclipse perfectly. And I was just saying with this strat that SMG should be able to control the map, but not if they get wiped like that. Yeah, that in a fight where it's more staggered coming through, like GXR picking off Moon first, then SMG kind of break up, they kind of split up and allow GXR to run them one by one. It doesn't work in SMG's favor. They need to work as a team. You get their initiation right, stack the evasion with a smoke screen, silence with the Arc Warden bubble to get really a lot of control into in your dream. Because if he's not caught out in that smoke screen, if he's not having to deal with a with a bubble coming through, his physical damage is just gonna fly out. He's got the Daedalus now as well, just flying in now. Last fight he didn't have that. Now his physical damage is really up there. And SMG need to Really be cautious. Like, they're trying to scout out with Moon first, treating him like the Nyx. Issue is, he's not as disposable as Paulson, and Paulson has ways of at least juking around with a Spike Carapace and Impale if he's quick enough. So, you have to be really, really careful in how you group up here from SMG as well. 7k lead coming out from GXR. They only found a tier 1 from that entire fight. Like, they couldn't transition to a tier 2. 
So you're still okay with that on SMG's end in terms of map control. They still have a lot of areas to play with. Uh, I think GXR really need to try to force a fight near an objective that they can take to further map control. To cut off the Roshan, take a tier 2 top. It's probably your best target. You can see Paulson just scouting around, still doing mixed things. KP and Arfu are going to be around, so he does get this information. They might be able to just snipe them. Arfu, oh, no, they miss the impale. Now the finger's out. Bramble's not going to be there in time, and KP immediately just runs. Terrorized, though? No, it's going to be avoided. Blink is there. They know he's in the tree line somewhere, and Paulson is going to find him. He might die for this. It'll still be well worth it, and maybe not even death. Paulson just barely survives. In the meantime, they are pushing in the bot tier 2. Or rather, just pushing in the bot lane now. I suppose it's that point where SMG, they start the rack games. They, they start doing Arc Warden things. They just keep pushing in the, the, other, the other lanes. Just make it so you never feel comfortable. Yeah, it's really awkward. And they have Alacrity to deal with a wave. But it's always a bit of a risk into the double itself. Because the damage output is pretty darn high. Paulson might be in for a nasty surprise with the double damage on Moon. He's almost got the Vendetta up. Yeah, there it is, Sleeping Darts there. Joe Cam's gonna jump in, but the immediate Hex is out, and now the Earth Spike is out onto the Nyx Assassin. So you've got in your dream to try and help out. And he's almost killed off Roggy on the uh, on the Panda. The Brewmaster's gonna try and run, but Roggy looks like he is dead. And meanwhile, on the backside, Arfu, he's gone. On to Moon, now they go. They're still gonna try and fight with the Arc Warden, but is it gonna be enough, Moon? He's blink striking out of there. Looks like he's gonna be fine. Another Sleeping Dart as well. Into the stun. They've locked down Alacrity. They'll get a less wreck for their troubles. So it all works out in the end from SMG. Managing to get that 3 to 1. Should open up a bit of a push here. They can commit for the tier 2 mid. And GXR, they manage to hold off. At the very least, uh, they don't lose any of their bigger cores in the Puck and the Luna. Losing a Leshrac is still pretty painful. And that tier 2 is not going to hold long. Creep Wave is coming in. Tempest Double and the Arc Warden itself there. Uh, you're going to lose your towers quick. Long respawn on that Lesh as well. No buyback gold. 70 seconds. I think that's going to open up a lot more objectives for SMG. Roshan, we'll see the respawn timer right now as well. If it's a quick one, SMG can counter Lucky Stars. And it is! 10 seconds away. Excellent. Make their way in. Well, maybe not. They might not scout it, but the Spark Reds should still get that information. There you go. Now mid one knows it's up. The GXR, they're in a bit of a bit more of a difficult position now as the sleeping dart is out again from Moon. Stuns are there as well. Nice Earth by catching out two of them. They've already got our food down. In your dream actually killed off our food. But Mizu is gonna die. And now with the rift in. KP gonna control up in your dream, but the eclipse is out. Moon's been caught by Polison. He's gonna drop in the backside. And somehow the fight evens out. As they will continue the chase onto the Nyx Assassin, but a nice terrorize in the backside. Doesn't matter though, Roggy's gonna die. As well as Paulson, so another even trade. And GXR, they are still standing their ground. Even though these team fights don't look very equal, they are still managing to even them out. Yeah, I'm, I'm curious why SMG forced the issue there. It just felt like a very staggered fight. Roshan was up, they could have easily gone for that objective. Now it opens up GXR. To actually play in that pit and Joe Camp scouts it out. So they can start clumping around there with the damage they have in, in your dream. This shouldn't take too long. That is Roche 2. Aegis, Cheese, Ag Shard ready to go. And that is going to be a fairly nice pickup, especially that shard. Free shard for Alacrity. Free limitless split earth spam. Does force the buyback out from Raji. And they still have their outpost because no tier 2s are there. So they can still fight here. They can still re engage, but it's too slow. No, it's way too late. Shards? Someone's got to pick it up. It's like In Your Dream does take it, but he's already got the shards active, so he's going to want to give it over to somebody else. Just hold it for now. So it looks like everyone's kind of struggling in terms of bag space at the moment. Yeah, and Alacrity does take it himself. So there you go. Yep. You've got the Leshrax, you've got the Leshrax shards on. Yep. Split Earth, really good tool for high ground defense and for chain stunning. With the of Bramble course. Maze, with the Cursed Crown, can line up. Uh, I want to use a lone mid, has to be cautious. 
There's a lot of heroes there from SMG. He's feeling much more confident though. He's got that BKB and Satanic up. Polis oh, is also feeling quite confident because ah, Fu's been caught with his pants down and he's going to drop it now. Moon, he's been silenced up. That is a long duration. He'll get the smoke screen. Is it going to matter? Not quite. They do get through What's the Ricky's that, HP. Bolson, he lives. <laughs> Bolson oh, does God. live. Bot lane, so however. Arc Warden doing Arc Warden things, pushing out the bot tier 3. It's not going to get too much damage out on it, though. Go Camp. Oh, he's got the real Arc Warden, mid one. Camp is stumble. It's going to force out the BKB charge. True Cam might actually die for this. <laughs> oh. Yeah, he may. Yeah, he's going to be alright. In fact, they'll go after the Tempest Double. A lot of gold on that Tempest if you can get it. And they will. And your dream will take it for himself. Yeah, I'm wondering what IYD goes for next. I mean, he still has the Satanic queued up along with the Scotty. Could go for the Scotty. I'd say an MKB sounds nice. But he has the BKB anyway. So probably just banking on those six seconds to stand in the smoke screen in the middle of the fight and not care. They finally find a tier 2 tower here in GXR. So they can take Outpost. Uh, lock out the next Roche, lock out most future Roshans on top of that, and invade the top jungle, look for more objectives. I think with an 11k lead, they should start feeling comfy about the possibility of a high ground push. They're just being really cautious because, again, the Arc Warden split push is scary. SMG are smoked up for the defense, though. Yeah, oh, but they found a nice target. Alacrity is going way too far and has lost the ages. Terrorize also going to be kind of wasted. Now Lacrity, he's going to pop his BKB and try to go for the fight. Sleeping Dart. Let's see what target that was on. In fact, no, it was Policy. They caught out the Nyx in your dream. He's going to try and fight, but now the Hex is out. Mid one, he's got the Scythe the Vice up. They're going to try and turn now with the Eclipse Moon. He gets taken down again, and they found the Arc Warden. They found mid one. They'll get through his BKB. They'll take him down. KB, he's going to try and run on the CK, but he's probably also dead. Oh my god, mid one. He doesn't have buyback. So if the high ground does break out here, they've already revealed their Ricky buyback. And the high ground goes so fast when you've got that Luna. This is where it gets scary for SMG. They depended on the bo bubble to really protect here. Well, buyback onto KP. They may realize very soon that mid one doesn't have a buyback available. Moon, gonna try and delay things with the sleeping dart, but. It's not going to do too much. It only delays by a few seconds as now they're onto the top racks and GXR. And this is a very difficult game for them, but they've made it look... Uh, they've been very competitive until this point now. 20k net worth lead. They've been looking amazing. Smoke screen. More delaying out from Moon. 43 seconds left. Till mid one will have the respawn going. But it's going to mean at least two lanes of barracks. On the brighter side, they, they can't get the third lane. But they might be able to get tier 4 towers. That's exactly what they're going to try for. They'll really realize that mid one doesn't have the buyback now. And they'll try to commit all the way with the Diabolic Edict and the Glaives just bouncing all around. Agony Accept the pop from KP. He's going to try and fight. They'll jump in on Alacrity on that Leshrac. But it doesn't look to be enough. The Rift is there. But KP, he's going to drop it now, Moon. He dives to the Glaives. Roji is trying to run. But he's only got one Brueling left. And this game is looking very over. There's no buybacks left. They've gone to the Ancient. Oh and that's it. They call it GG. GXR. Oh. They just look so darn good. At least today. <laughs> but they've been, yeah, they'll die of the fountain. Middle of time one more time before this game ends. Oh my god. It, it looked like SMG was starting to build up there, but then they kept caught out a couple of times. GXR with that great team fight up top. Just getting all the targets they need. Sure, they lost ages first, but Alacrity wasn't dead. He couldn't die. And they manage to just play around with that. They catch out mid one who's forced to join in instead of split pushing on that Arc Warden because he is their main damage output. And it just wasn't enough to compensate. Like there was enough farm on GXR. They, they, were, they had the net worth lead, which was the big issue. When you're running Arc Warden, you want to have the lead. They didn't have it. And they just couldn't line up those hits. It was a good back and forth though. And it felt like SMG was getting enough space out for KP to get the trickle farm into the Ags. For Moon to get his defusal BKB, but in the end, just GXR isolating them out. The movements from Paulson in particular, just managing managing to give them the information to take these favorable fights, 
and just shut out the game from a couple of good engagements like that. Well, with that, of course, we are going to head to a short 10-minute break. And right after that break, we'll be back with Game 2 between GXR and SMG. We'll see who takes that one out. We'll be right back.